Hi, I'm Yvonne Brooks from McNally Jackson Books. Today we're going to read Otter and Otter, a love story, written by James Howe and illustrated by Chris Roshka. And on the front we see an otter, we see a fish, and on the end pages there's more fish, and everybody's under the water there on the river. The river sparkled the day Otter found love. He was not looking for it. Love, that is. He was looking for dinner. But when Otter gazed into those eyes, those round, sweet, glistening eyes, he knew that he had found what he had not known he was looking for. Impossible, he said. I'm in love with my food source. He asked her name, not certain if she was a he or he was a she. Something about the eyes told him she. She said, gurgle. But because he had water in his ears, Otter heard it as Myrtle and thought, such a beautiful name to match such beautiful eyes. And so it was that Otter fell in love with a fish. Myrtle or gurgle, if you prefer, had not been looking for love either. She'd been looking to stay alive. Please don't eat me, her round, sweet, glistening eyes pleaded with Otter while he was gazing into them, finding love. All she wanted was a loosening of his grip, a slippery escape, a return to the safety of family and home. But then in his eyes, she saw the sparkling river reflected and a tender and lonely heart revealed. And the stirrings of her own heart, her own tremulous, fish not wishing to be dinner heart, awakened to something new and surprising. Not only love, but a future she could never have imagined. You see he's holding her. From that moment on, Otter and Myrtle were rarely apart. They swam together, they played hide and go seek together, they told each other stories, hers of the depths of the river, his of the banks and beyond. They warmed their faces in the morning sun and silently considered the stars that filled the midnight sky. In a perfect world, it would now be written, and they lived happily ever after. In a perfect world, an otter could fall in love with a fish and a fish with an otter, and that would be that. But it is not a perfect world, alas, and so that is seldom as simple as that. Have you heard about Otter? It began, the talking that is. He was always odd. Now he is Otter. He's lost his mind, some said, unable to see that he had lost nothing, only found his heart. It isn't right. It isn't natural. It isn't the way of the Otter. Day after day, night after night, Otter heard the talk and wondered, what is right? What is wrong? What is natural? What is the way of the Otter? When he asked the question of Myrtle, she lowered her eyes, which appeared to Otter to fill with tears, though it was hard to tell since her eyes were always wet. The way of the Otter, she told him, is why I can no longer swim with you or play with you or warm my face next to yours in the morning sun. A reed standing close by leaned into Otter as if he was still to be sure he was still breathing. Do you no longer love me? Otter asked, his voice a little more than a whisper. I am no longer sure a fish can love an otter, Myrtle replied, when the way of the otter is to eat fish. Now Otter's eyes grew wet with tears. I must eat, he said. But must you eat my friends? Myrtle asked. My family? Otter had no answer. Feeling an old loneliness return, he watched Myrtle swim away. In a tragic tale, it would now be written, and so their love could never be. In a tragic tale, an otter could never love a fish, nor a fish love an otter, and that would be that. But this is not a tragic tale. It contains hope, and so the ending is yet to be written. 
Potter has come to his senses, it began. The talking, that is. Now we will forget all about that falling in love with fish nonsense, someone said, unable to know that falling in love is never nonsense. Otter tried not to listen, but in time he thought, They're right. It is impossible. You cannot love your food source. But when he warmed his face in the morning sun, he imagined Myrtle beside him. And when he gazed at the midnight sky, he saw Myrtle's eyes a thousandfold. Is it the way of the otter, he wondered, to be alone? One morning... Otter floated away his way to Beaver's house. Good morning, Beaver called out. Care for a bit of birch bark? Otter wrinkled his nose. Otters don't eat bark, he said, but thank you for your kindness. Ah, said Beaver. How about an apple then? Otter shook his head. Apples are awfully tasty, Beaver went on. Tastier, I find, than fish. Otter pulled himself up onto a log to look Beaver in the eye. Have you ever eaten fish? Otter asked. No, said Beaver, but I suppose I might if I ever fell in love with an apple. Beaver was known for his wisdom, and in that moment Otter knew he had found the wisdom he had not known he was looking for. Are you saying? Otter began. I am saying, said Beaver, that there is the way of the otter and there is the way of the heart. It is up to you to decide which to follow. Otter ate a bit of the apple, a bit bite of the bark, and the fruit of a water lily, which he found to be especially delicious. Thank you, said Otter. You're welcome, said Beaver. And next time, bring Myrtle. There's some lovely plankton just on the other side of the dam. That night, Otter was considering the stars when he heard a familiar splish. Beaver told me I would find you here, Myrtle said as she swam up to him. My family was wondering if you would come play with us tomorrow. I would love to, said Otter. Perhaps we could have dinner together. Have you ever eaten the bark of the aspen tree? I could try it, Myrtle said. It's quite tasty, much tastier than fish. I don't know what I ever saw in fish. Myrtle wriggled against Otter's side. Except for you, dear Myrtle, he said. Except for you. It wasn't long before the talking began again. It isn't right. It isn't natural. It isn't the way of the Otter. But Otter and Myrtle did not listen. They swam together. They played hide-and-go-seek together. They discussed the mysteries of life and love with Beaver while dining on plankton and apples and the fruit of the water lily. They warmed their faces in the morning sun and silently considered the stars that filled the midnight sky. And now it can be written... And they lived happily ever after. The end. Hope you enjoyed Otter and Otter, a love story.